Hi, and welcome to episode number 13 of the Tranquil Cottage Knits podcast. Today is Sunday, September 24th, 2017, and I am Michelle, your host. You can find me on Ravelry as Tranquil Cottage, on Instagram as Tranquil Cottage Knits, and you can find the blog at www.tranquilcottageknits.weebly.com. So hi, happy Sunday. Uh, I am, as usual, hanging out here in the backyard. I have my favorite things my dogs, Callie and Tucker. Um, my husband's actually hanging out here with me today, so he will probably try to trip me up and make snide comments and chuckle. Stop that. <laughs> um, and no iced coffee. It is too late in the day. It is almost five o'clock in the evening. Um, I had grand plans for podcasting this weekend and, uh, just didn't, <laughs> just didn't make it. Um, it has been an amazingly wonderful and busy weekend. Um, started out a friend of mine, uh, who I don't get to see very often, came into town um, to catch some Orioles games, and uh, he text messaged me, and we were able to get together. So I went out to dinner with him on Friday night, and met a friend of his, and had a lovely time, and. Uh, we've been friends since kindergarten, so uh, he lives in Florida and I'm up here, so we don't, really don't get to talk or see each other all that often, uh, so it was really nice just to hang out. It's really funny. After all these years, every time we run into each other, it is still like we have never been apart, so that's just awesome to have friends like that. So then I got up Saturday morning and went to Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival. Yay! Uh, my grand plan had been to take a bunch of pictures on Saturday and then to actually um, take my laptop and record from the festival Sunday morning. And nope, <laughs> didn't happen. Um, so what, what we did is uh, my husband went with me and we uh, took chairs and just kind of made a home base where he hung out the whole day and uh, he checked out a few booths. But um, not, not terribly many. I'm the shopper in the family. So had a really good time. Uh, talked to some people at the hip strings booth about uh, learning to, to spin on a drop spindle and learning how to use a supported spindle and how there was a great divide for me in that. Uh, I really thought I would, as much as I was interested in spinning, I really thought I never would because I tried spinning on a drop spindle and really didn't like the process. It wasn't relaxing, it wasn't soothing, it was just really kind of frustrating for me. Um, I didn't like the yarn that I got, I didn't like the, I didn't like how tired my muscles were, the lack of muscle memory, um, which probably would have come with time, but it was just all of these little things combined um, really just kind of made me not want to do it. So I had thought so sad. Mm, I like fiber. I like feeling fiber. I like drafting fiber. Um, but I don't like spinning. I'll never get a spinning wheel. You know, it, maybe it's just something cool to have. I, I'll never do it. I don't like spinning. Um, and so I was with uh, my best friend Becky, who is wrapped in wool. Um, on, she's Western Lindsay on Ravelry, but she has the Wrapped in Wool podcast, and she's just Wrapped in Wool on Instagram. And uh, so one day I was at Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival with her a few years ago, and um, we stopped by the hip strings booth. And as we were walking by, I kind of stuck my head in, and I was like, oh, spindles, and kept walking. And later that day, um, we walked past again, and I looked in and stopped and realized, oh, wait, it's not drop spindles, it's supported spindle. Well, what, what, what's supported spindling? And um, got a quick visual lesson and invested in a supported spindle right then and there on the spot and some very nice fiber and uh, went home and absolutely fell in love. It was the relaxing, rhythmic, um, kind of just working with fiber, but in a way that soothed my soul. Um, so it, it was that, and I had thought I was getting that with drop spindling, and it just, it didn't work for me. So uh, I proceeded to work with a supported spindle, absolutely loved it, 
and eventually moved on to my spinning wheel and absolutely love that and still do. So I thought I was going to have to give up the opportunity to spin uh, because I didn't think I liked it and um, I got the opportunity to experience something new at the Hip Strings booth a few years ago and it absolutely changed my life in the fibery knitting sense. Um, so the other thing about them is they have a huge, huge variety of different fiber types and they also have, um, like they have fiber that's like roving that's like loosely bound. Um, they have it that's kind of bulk. They have it in uh, little batlings. They have it in braids. So whatever you're comfortable with, they can do it. They're actually really, really wonderful. And when I was there, um, I actually started talking with somebody who was hanging out at their booth, looking at, they had just, I guess, got their first drop spindle, um, or were just learning how to uh, use a drop spindle, and they were asking about the difference. And so I had a good conversation with them about what the difference was over um, over them looking at the materials and just how I explained that how for me that was absolutely life-changing in my fiber realm. It was just everything I'd been looking for, calming and soothing and relaxing and repetitive and just that um, I don't know how to explain it. Just that zen generating action uh, and again, of course, you have something finished at the end of it. You have this lovely yarn that you can then knit up into something you can wear. And it all started out by you just having this glorious experience with this fiber running through your hands. Um, and how just awesome that was. So I have never gotten anything from them that I didn't love. Uh, and if you are maybe not a fan of drop spindling, but you still have a love affair with fiber, maybe just try supported spindle. I'm just saying, it was really awesome and it was a total game changer for me. Um, so having said that, um, when I went Saturday, I did not buy a single bit of fiber or yarn or tools. I got this shirt. This was from um, the Ross Farm and it was just too cute for me to pass up and uh, so that was what I got on Saturday. I had fallen in love with some fiber at Hip Strings, and it was called U uh, Baby Unicorn, and it was a llama blend that had Stellina in it, and it was pale pink and white with a little bit of blue. It's just really pretty. Um, but I was like, mm, I've got a lot of fiber at home, don't really need to do it. Back and forth, back and forth. Um, and in the end, I decided I was not going to do it. Uh, so I was getting ready to leave. My husband and I packed up. I had been into the barn that has the juried fleece. And uh, so as we're, we're getting ready to leave, I said, I want to stop in and look at this fleece one more time. Like I need a fleece. And um, so I went back and looked at it and smushed it and sniffed its sheepy glorious goodness and uh turns out my husband bought it for me for my birthday now my birthday is not until next month so it's totally an early birthday present but i was so in love with it and i really didn't want to i didn't want to walk away from it but like and yet you did how many times <laughs> Yes, I did, because I couldn't justify it. Um, so he was like the most awesome husband ever, because not only did he go to a festival where he was, I'm not going to say completely uninterested, because there was the coffee roasters. There was the booth with the caramel popcorn. There were woodworkers and also um, 3D printed things from Turtle Maid. There, there were things that he's interested in, but mostly what he was interested in was holding down the fort, keeping our lawn chairs uh, nice and comfortable and free, watching my bag when I would leave it, and playing video games on his phone and listening to podcasts with his headphones on while the world went on around him. 
and buy me a fleece. So, my husband's better than your husband. <laughs> He's chuckling at me. So, um, the fleece I got, I think what really... I think what really struck me about it, I saw it from the opposite side of the table, and uh, she's like, oh, that's really pretty. It's luminous. Um, so it had a lot of a lot of shine in it that I thought was really pretty, but I didn't expect. Um, and I was like, well, what kind of shape is that from? And I went over, and I was like, eh, Romney. Um, I've mentioned before, I'm not a fan of Romney. I'm not a fan of spinning Romney. I'm not a fan of um, knitting with Romney. Um, but I was talking with one of the girls uh, who was working the jury fleece, um, the tables, and she and I got in a conversation about how uh, some of the fibers that you don't necessarily traditionally like to spin, how a lot of it is based on the sheep and what the sheep are eating and the condition of the sheep and the sh condition that they're kept in. And um, so I walked over and actually gave this fleece a smush, and it was so soft, which is not my experience with Romney. Um, I wanted it so bad and I was like nope 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 don't need a fleece the dogs will try to eat it the cat will try to nest in it I have to keep it away from the mice I have to wash it I don't have a drum carter I don't have any carter all these reasons why I don't need a fleece I have a fleece. Oh, it smells so shibby. So, so pretty. So, um, a little bit about her. This is, well, you can see on here. Um, it says that this lovely fleece was grown by a Romney U number 128 slash 012. Um, isn't that like a colorway? Given numbers, not not uh, names. And she has got, been given the nickname Tweedledum, and she has a uh, buddy that she hangs out with called Tweedledee. Very sweet. And especially because I am a huge Alice in Wonderland fan. Uh, and it's, she's from, the fleece is from Cullenstone Farm. It's based in northern Shenandoah Valley in White Post, Virginia. Um, so that is about 25 minutes from me. Uh, and it looks like the uh, farm, the farmers, the people who own her, uh, left farming and then came back. It says, having always said that farming is too much hard work and that having grown up on farms, neither of us would ever go back to farming. We moved back to Virginia in 2010 to go back to farming. Since we've been raising sheep, boarding horses, and raising assorted poultry on a part of the farm that's been in Seth's family for the last 80 years, we really enjoy minor and or rare breeds that have fallen out of favor commercially because they have a lot to offer small-scale farmstead production. And then, of course, they give their information. If you have questions or comments about the fleece, please feel free to contact us. And it's Cullenstone Farm, Sarah and Seth. But this is the sheep. Oh, my goodness. That is Tweedledum. I miss Tweedledum and Tweedledee. That face. So I'm very excited. And, uh, very excited to have a fleece. And, uh, you can see the fiber down there. Now, obviously, I just got this yesterday. So I have not had, um, all the time to go actually start washing it yet. But what I... I did do is um, wash a lock and kind of do a hand spin on it to see, uh, to kind of test out what fiber I wanted to get from it, what I wanted to do to it to create the yarn I want. Um, and so I can get a lot, a lot of mileage out of this yarn or out of this fiber um, because it is seven pounds, which is kind of amazing. Um, it has a staple length of seven inches. Hello, long draw. And uh, it, it says it's well-skirted, light vegetable matter, quite clean. It is consistently sound. Um, it is moderately soft. Pretty darn soft. Long wool. Um, and it says open wavy locks. Lovely drape. Color is white. 
And the recommended uses are, um, let's see, things I can't read, <laughs> light vegetable matter, great outerwear sweater, weaving um, for blankets. Uh, it is going to be, I believe, a cable sweater for me. So I'm excited and uh, I'm trying to decide now if I'm going to wash everything and uh, then dye it, dye the, uh, dye the locks and dye the fiber and then card it and spin it. Or if I want to go ahead, go through the whole process, spin it into yarn and then dye the yarn. So I haven't quite decided exactly how I'm going to go about it, but I'm really excited to try. Um, and when I did that, this is my test yarn. This is my sample that I did. Um, I'm doing it as a uh, two-ply. This is a heavy fingering or a light sport. And this is what it looks like. Very fuzzy, very just yummy. Um, and it is really incredibly soft. Um, I let my nephew Emmett squish it today. He's like, oh, that's soft. Um, so he was excited about it. I love the halo, and I'm um, really, I'm really excited. Tried it up here with a bit, uh, with a little thinner and a bit more tighter twist. Um, didn't like it as much as I like it down here with the, with the looser twist, but definitely going with a two ply. Um, not only because I'm not terribly happy with my Navajo ply. Um, It's been my experience that whether I try to Navajo ply or do a three a traditional three ply, uh, what happens is my yarn is so much more inconsistent than it is with just a two ply. Um, plus, I like the bounce that I'm getting out of the two ply. It just see if you can see if you can see that bit of bounce. I really kind of like that. So um, that's what we're going to go for. We are going to go for seven pounds of a two-ply Romney done with long draw and I'm going to dye this up and just see how it takes color uh, and then come up with a plan. I'm thinking it might need to be like some deep foresty green and a beautiful cable sweater. That'd be hot. Navy blue too. Or apple green. Or yellow or turquoise the possibilities are endless um, for everybody who purchased a fleece they were uh, they were giving away unicorn baby concentrated laundry detergent beyond clean fragrance free it says tougher on stains and odors removes lanolin biodegradable deep cleans natural and synthetic fibers so they gave me uh, four of these for my first wash and then two more in case I have to do a, a second wash so I'm excited because then I didn't even have to um, you know research what's going to be best to clean my fiber so that was it and then I guess I have a theme because I told you I was interested in the baby unicorn colorway uh, in the llama from hip strings this is unicorn baby so Today, um, oh, yesterday, we did, my husband got this out for me, we did go get a package of coffee from Sibling Coffee Roasters. Um, we tried their Nicaraguan, and it was really delightful. I've been drinking hot coffee on a hot day, and I'm drinking it black, when normally, for me, coffee is a sugar and cream conveyance device, and it was delicious. So I was really excited about it. So since we do our cold brew, my husband has already um, started it and we will pour it off tonight and we will have uh, sibling coffee. I'm sorry. Yeah, sibling coffee roasters for breakfast tomorrow morning. So yay for that. And in case anybody is interested in reaching them. Oh, yeah, it was just roasted on Friday. She was at least she had a ton more today, and she said she was up to the wee hours of the morning roasting more. I was just like, I could kiss you. <laughs> uh, this is their business card. So you can find out how to reach them. There's their website. There's their phone number. Uh, again, we try their 
hot coffee in the middle of a hot day, no sugar, no cream, just straight black coffee. It was delicious. Um, and, and again, I normally, I'm like, when I do my, my big giant coffee, I'm like, there's that much coffee in it, but then there's like that much milk and then that much creamer and then ice. Um, but for me, to be willing to drink coffee black, that was really good. The flavor, there was a nuttiness. It was just delicious. So, um, again, that Sibling Coffee Roasters, give them a shot. Uh, they are local. They are based uh, in West Virginia, Summit Point, I believe. Let me look. Yep, Summit Point, West Virginia. Um, so that is that. Uh, when I went back to Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival today, I got to hang out all day with uh, Becky, who is my best friend from the Wrapped in Wool podcast, and uh, she'll be watching this later, so hi, Beck, um, and her adorable little Emmett, who is my bean. I've called him bean since the day he was born. Actually, well before he was born, I called him my bean, and uh, we were playing t today, and he's like, say, where is my Emmett Bean? And I'm like, where is my Emmett Bean? He's like, I'm right here. So he's just such a precious kid. Um, but he helped me pick out fiber. And of course, we went back to what I was drawn to, which was Baby Unicorn, which is 60% Superfine Merino Wool, 20% Baby Llama, 14% Merino, and 6% Stellina from Hip Strings. Oops. Get their business card in there. They are just really nice people, and they do a really good job with their fiber prep. Um, I've never had anything from them that was um, done poorly or matted. or it, it's, They do really well. Get a free little stitch marker, which is nice. That's a nice little thing. And so this is the fiber. So unbelievably soft. You see that? See if you can see the glitteriness in this. So pretty. And um, they do this this great thing where they have a lot of their fibers uh, spun and hanging from the racks next to the color, so you can actually see how each kind of fiber uh, spins up because they do have such a blend. Um, they have some of their alpaca blends. They have. Oh my goodness, I think I got my pole worth from them. I know they have Baby Camel, um, Merino, BFL, um, Silk, uh, all kinds of stuff. And um, their fiber prep is just wonderful. And she has Jill, who, um, who owns it, does such a good job of her colorways, designing her colorways, and just really, it's lovely stuff. Um, but again... This is their card. Ah, there I go. And their prices are very, very reasonable. I was stuck between this and one that was, uh, I believe, alpaca instead of the baby llama. I had, like, I think, 20% alpaca instead of llama. And it was $13 for the four ounces. I mean, like, the prices are just amazing for them. Um, I know if you look, follow the Yarniax podcast, I did recommend them to uh, Charmaine, Charlene. Charlene from the Yarniax podcast, uh, which brings me around to the podcaster meetup. Here's the thing. I need to write things down <laughs> because I met so many nice people and I am absolutely wretchedly horrible about remembering names. I can't remember names and I'm coming back home and doing research uh, because I'm like, I have to remember who everybody is. So I did, um, I was lucky enough to get to hang out with, uh, sorry, got a lot of mosquito bites on my ankles this weekend. Uh, I was lo lucky enough to get to hang out at our podcaster meetup. Um, and it was, um, one o'clock on Saturday and, uh, got to meet, uh, let's see. Oh my goodness. The Thistle Hollow. <laughs> the Thistle Hollow. Evelyn, Evelyn. I told you I'm horrible with names, Evelyn, um, and I know a Lefty Knitter podcast, because I'm a Lefty Knitter too, well, I'm a Lefty, I 
knit continental. I knit normal continental, but a lefty knitter podcast. I'm trying to think. I can see her. I can see her avatar in my head. I can see her face in my head. Akilah the Hun? Don't smack me if I'm wrong. Um, I should. I should look up. Um, we got together. Oh, I had it pulled up. Um, we had a picture um, taken at, well, there was a picture taken of us at the podcaster meetup, and it was the three of us, and it was absolutely lovely. And um, let me see. Yeah. I killed the hun. Ha! Huh. That was us. Oh my god, they were so nice. So nice. I am not... I'm not typically somebody who is comfortable with just like walking up and joining a group. I'm not. I'm I'm not shy. But a little social anxiety. Just, I don't know. Maybe it's just a natural thing. Maybe everybody has it. But when I walked up, they were just, everybody was just so nice. And uh, I brought buttons. Um, like when I did the, um, when I did Worldwide Knit in Public Day, I did a button bar. Kind of my, a knitter version of a Sunday bar where there's all these buttons and little cups and you can, you know, you get a little bag and you get to um, pick out some buttons, take them home. And then I also was passing these out to everybody. Um, it says knitwear design from my one giant posted pattern, you know, but I really need to, uh, I've got so many designs, even ones that are completed. Um, I've got two that just need to go into tech editing. I've, I've got so much. I just need to sit still and do it. Um, but I passed out my business card and, um, I, I, each one had like a little stitch marker and a little handmade button in it and most of them had a sheepy button and then some of them and had these little most of them had these little handmade with love buttons um but i tried to make sure that everybody got one and i handed them out to a bunch of other people just as i was passing if i struck up a conversation with somebody i would give them one of these um just a little way to keep a face with the name, um, because I, maybe that's me projecting, but I am horrible with names. I try, but I'm horrible with names. So, if I met you and said hi, or you have one of these, find the Ravelry group. It is Tranquil Cottage Knits on Ravelry, or the Instagram, Tranquil Cottage Knits on, at Instagram, or, uh, just email me or somehow let me know your name let me know who you are because again i i remember i try to remember everybody but i'm so bad about it that's why i do this um just because i think it makes it easier to put a face to the name so um i hope everybody who got one enjoyed it but everybody was just so completely lovely um there was a small talk of whiskey. Um, there were children and delightful people everywhere with yarn, and nobody is like, that's what I love about festivals. Nobody looks at you weird if you're like, oh, can I smush? You know, everybody's just like, absolutely. Or here, would you like to smush? And you're like, thanks. You know, I love festivals. Um, my husband laughs and he says, uh, when I came home tonight, he was like, so, did you have a good day hanging out with your people? <laughs> I did. Um, that's kind of how I feel. Common ground. Lovely. So lovely. And everybody was just, just kind and open. And so, if, if I met you, thank you. Um, thank you for being kind and open and wonderful and welcoming it's just awesome and if I didn't meet you 
well, we've got to fix that. <laughs> um, for anybody who is local, because I know Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival is a local event. For anybody who is local to the Winchester, Front Royal, Woodstock, Linden areas, any of that uh, in Virginia, uh, we do have a knit night that is every Wednesday night at Happy Creek Coffee from 6 to 8. Um, that's Happy Creek Coffee because they have four locations now. That's Happy Creek Coffee in Front Royal on the corner of High and Jackson Streets, I believe. Um, Jackson should be the road that parallels Main Street in town, um, so it should the corner of High and Jackson. Um, anybody is welcome to join. Absolutely anybody. Welcome. Um, so, there's that. I am obviously still looking forward to Rhinebeck. That is coming up next month. Um, just can't even imagine. Still working on my Rhinebeck sweater, but I haven't worked on it much this week. Um, so, and then normally... I would try to get knitting time on the weekend, but I just wanted to be at the festival and be with everybody and uh, not be trying to do two things at once. So, oh, and I encountered a goat today. He was the sweetest goat ever, ever. I was rubbing his face and he just closed his eyes and leaned his face up against the bars of, of his little pen. Like, this is the best thing ever. And I maybe left a little bit of my heart at that goat pen. I don't need a goat. We don't have room for a goat. We don't have a fence. How would I keep a goat? Oh, I wanted that goat. I wanted to just sit down and have a conversation with that goat. He was so sweet. Just so sweet. So, again, I'm sorry. My plan had really been to do as much as as much of the podcast as I could from the actual festival um, to break out the laptop at, at the, um, I wanted to bring my wheel and just kind of hang out and spin. And I wanted to also bring out my laptop at the, uh, at the podcaster meetup. And so that we could all just kind of introduce ourselves and, and maybe spend a couple minutes talking together uh, on camera, because if you know my podcast, but you don't know one of theirs, you know, or likewise, you know, it, it would just, maybe you can find another podcast that you really like. Um, because again, everybody was lovely. It's always, it, it's not that I don't expect people to be lovely. It's just lovely people are always heartwarming and a wonderful surprise. Um, even when you encounter 50 of them in a day, each one is still a lovely surprise. <sighs> so... That was my uh, SVFF experience. Oh, I did get one more thing. Um, the other thing that I got is not a big deal. It is not even for me. I have a lady in my knitting group who wanted to make some more dryer balls. So we are going to be doing that maybe on Wednesday. We'll kind of start working on them. Um, but we picked up from spindlesandmore.com three ounces of wool roving. So that is going to be for a fun group knit or group project at uh, knitting group this week. Other than that, I got some popcorn and I got um, unicorn baby and baby unicorn. And then I got my Tweedledum fleece. And mostly I got to spend time at an amazing festival with amazing people. And that was like the best part of it all. Really wonderful. So, um, Tucker and Callie have started playing. I am absolutely sure there are so many of you who maybe don't get to go to the festival who think that my, my, um, my talk today is completely just cheesy. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but... It was a really wonderful experience, and so now I'm going to go in the house and make some marmalade, and my husband and I are going to be grilling shrimp over the fire pit tonight for dinner. This is it. This is our Sunday. So, I hope you guys had a wonderful week. I hope uh, if, if you got the chance to go to the festival, you did, and um, I hope to encounter more people who are planning to go to Rhinebeck. Again, if you like the shirt, it's available at uh, Ross Farms. Check out on Instagram, Scooter Pie the Shepherd Guy. Um, he can get you the hookup. 
So he is Ross Farms. And other than that, have a great week. Thanks.